Hi, this is Libby. And this is Roberta. And this is Art Blog Radio. Cindy Ettinger began her fine art printing studio in 1982 after graduating from art school and spending two years in a New York print shop. Cindy is a master printer and her C.R. Ettinger Studios is the go-to print shop for artists working in etching. C.R. Ettinger Studios is one of the local print studios that was a sponsor of the International Print Festival, Philographica. Um, so what is it that makes this uh, print studio different from others that might be in town? Well, this is a for-profit. It's not a non-profit. I'm not affiliated with the school. I'm not a collective. So you can get uh, stuff done, etchings done, for instance, any, in a lot of other places in town? Um, I don't know that there's a lot of other places. There might be some that are upstarts that I don't know about, but for a long time I was the only person here. So when did you come to Philadelphia? Tell us that story, because you're from New York originally. Right. I came here in 1975 to go to Philadelphia College of Art, which is now University of the Arts. And um, I was a painting major, and I switched to printmaking after taking a great etching class with a teacher named Marty Zelt. And um, after school, returned to New York, and a classmate of mine asked me to start a studio with him. And um, originally I said no, and then when I had no other ideas about what to do, I called him and said, all right, we'll, let's go. So, so why did you say no? What, what was in your head, do you think, that you thought you could do other than this? Well, you know, when you're in your 20s, the idea of producing other people's art is not what you're thinking about. So <laughs> that was the main thing. So are you making your own art right now? Not very much, but um, I try, but it's very hard because uh, I'm always thinking for the other artists and it's very hard for me to know what my ideas are because when I'm working with someone, I really think like that person and I take on their ideas. So we, we're in your studio and we're looking on the walls. There are um, Marilyn Holsing. Young Marie. Young Marie prints and there's Daniel Heyman prints and some others that I don't recognize. David Furtick. David Furtick. And so are you? Are these all active projects? And do you, you juggle more than one project at a time? Yeah, these are things I'm working on right now. And usually I have um, at least two projects, if not more. But occasionally I'll have one giant project that I'm focused on. Can you just explain a little bit how it works? The, do the artists come to you with a project and they say, I want to make a series of etchings, an addition of 10 or whatever. And then how does the money work? Because you have to buy paper and ink. And can you Well, that? usually the um, majority of the people that come here are people who um, maybe took a printmaking class 30 years before in college. And they, um, they really need my guidance. So I go, I look at their work. I, I try to determine what techniques would be appropriate for the, what they want to do. I show them other prints that have used certain techniques. They get excited usually and I give them test plates and they try things. And then um, usually the people that I've been printing for lately have come back a lot and the financing usually is all over the place. But when someone is new, they uh, come, they give me a deposit, we buy materials, I get, and then after we make the plates, I get a, a I get paid for making the plates, and then after the edition is printed, I get paid for printing the edition. Well, how is it their work if you're making the plates? I'm sorry oh, to be so no, dumb. But... No, that's a good question. Um, I prepare the plates. They actually do the draw. They're doing the artwork. I they will scratch through the through the uh, hard ground, expose the copper, and I will etch that. And um, and then I give the plate to them to work on some more. So they're actually working on the plate. After I proof the plate, they taught, we talk about what needs to be done. They make the changes. They're, they're working on the plates. The only thing I'm doing is guiding them through the kinds of techniques available and um, helping them decide how long to etch a plate and how they can print it. But they're making the original plate. Is there a limitation on size? 
like the etching plates only come a certain size or well you can only usually print. Uh, and there I mean paper comes in certain sizes so um, a standard sheet of paper is 22 by 30 an oversized sheet is 30 by 44 I've yet to meet someone who who even wants to do the 30 by 44 it's just so much more money it's easier to even make two smaller prints and put them together but I have done some paper a 30 by 44 pieces of paper in here in this little studio. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very little studio. Can you give us the dimensions? Do you know them? The printing room is 12 feet by 25 feet. And is this big enough for you? Do you have dreams of a bigger space? I do have dreams. <laughs> and so hopefully they'll come true. I'm supposed to be purchasing a building within the next few weeks on 22nd and South. So um, that space is 1,500 square feet. So I'm really looking forward to that. Can I ask you why you have mirrors on the wall? They, they create light, but also sometimes it's good to, for the artist to look at their plates in reverse. And um, it's easy to, when there's mirrors around, sometimes I have to look, hold the prints up in reverse to look at the plate to see. It's just one of those things that, uh, for me, makes it easier. It's because the plates the print, are reversed. The plates are reversed right. and the printing is the positive. Right. Yeah. Um, can you tell us some of the people? I know you don't only work with beginners. I know you work with a lot of accomplished artists. Well, over the years, I, I've worked with... Um, Lots of people. I, I, I can't, I'm drawing a blank. I, I want to say I work with Neil Welliver, Enrique Chigoya. Um, did you do that print he did for the Rosenbach Museum? Yes, yes, I did. Oh. The one that was Obama's? Yeah, it's hanging at the Metropolitan Museum of Art right now. Oh. And uh, they purchased it for this um, show that they have um, political cartoons. Virgil Marty, um, the Dufala Brothers. It's been 30 years, so there's a lot of <laughs> I don't want to leave people out. So what happens if you and an artist disagree about the direction a print is taking? Does that happen? And One of the things I find is that a lot of artists really like the collaboration. They're in their studio by themselves most of the time, and um, artists have a lot of self-doubt. I ask a lot of questions. I might say, well... Why would you want to do that? What are you, you know, what's your goal? And they, when they say it out loud to me, they answer their own questions a lot of times, but they don't ask themselves those questions. It's like, I know Bill Scott was here, and we would just go back and forth doing 16 different versions of some prints, just talking about why this color or, or what works, or, you know, it, it, it's um, a great conversation. Do you talk about edition size with them, or do you set the edition size? Um, they usually set the edition size. And how big can those editions be? Well, you know, in, when I first started, the edition sizes were 200 in the early days. That's big. Yes. It was a great way for me to learn how to print editions. <laughs> but then they went down to 100, and then 50, and now an average size edition is 25 because... It's a lot to sell, 25, of one thing. So do you ever feel jealous because they're making their artwork and you're helping them? No, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you mentioned to us when we were talking before that you were doing these collections from the newspaper. You want to tell us about that? My scam file. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, we want to hear all about that. Well, after the Bernie Madoff scam... I noticed that all of a sudden there were all these scams in the newspapers coming out. I decided in January 1st of 2011 to January 1st of 2012, I was going to cut out the scams in the Philadelphia Inquirer newspaper. So I started this scam file, and it's enormous. And I have big, grand ideas of doing a project, but it's, I hardly have enough time to work on it. So how are you picturing it visually? Is it going to be newsprint images or? Well, I want to, I want to combine the newsprint images with other things, and uh, that's what I'm working on now. 
are there photo etching plates? Is there, there is that are. possible so you could photograph them and then? You, yeah, I don't think this would be a photo project. It would be a digital, if anything. You know, um, my take on etching or printmaking is always that it's a medium, it's a tool, and it should be used for the things that that medium brings to the table and not forced. It's a means to an end, not the end. So when you do a photo plate of something, it's, it's um, rarely necessary. So do you do digital printing? I do. I work um, a lot with Silicon Gallery, who, and we've combined digital with relief and etching. It's definitely a tool. I, I love digital. I just think that um, it also shouldn't be used just for reproductions for art, but I think it's a great tool to mm -hmm. combine with what I do. So do you think there's some reason why Philadelphia is this amazing print-focused town? There's a lot of printing going on I here. think it's the community. I think the city is the right size to have a community that works to, that knows that we aren't too big or too small. For years, I was here by myself. There weren't very many people, and I didn't even know there was other printmaking going on until the Philadelphia Print Collaborative contacted me and asked me to get involved, and that turned into Philographica. And when we all started working together, it just became better. I'm sure lots of other places have printmakers, but I don't know that they have the kind of community that Philadelphia has. And how, let's talk about the collector base for prints in this town, because there is one. Mm -hmm. um, would you say uh, it's a good collector base? Has that been your experience? Yes. You know, I, I am a service for the artist, so I don't really get involved that much with the uh, collector base, but there is one I know from Philographica. On your website, you've got prints listed with a dollar amount. So right. do you also sell them out of your studio, or is it all through the artist? I rarely sell them, but I do sell them. I do. It's just um, I prefer them to buy through the artist because they need to sell them in order to make it worthwhile to come back. So I would promote the artist selling them and only would sell it after they're done with their edition. Do you get a print just out of curiosity yeah. from the edition? I get I get two prints. I get a bona tire, which is the print that you pull first, supposedly to match, and then I get a printer's proof. Some studios take many more than that. Um, sometimes, when an artist has a project and it's going to cost more than they want it to cost or have prepared to pay, I will work something out where I'll take extra prints in lieu of them finishing the project because. It really has to be made to the best, it, you know, you have to take it as far as you can take it. You can't stop because you've run out of money. And I hate to see someone not do something because they're limited. So I usually try to work it out with the artist. Wow. So what do you do with these prints that you keep? Um, sometimes I sell them. So a lot of them are sitting in my drawers right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you had talked to us earlier about how long it's taken you to find a place. You know, I, I looked unseriously for about 10 years, but seriously for two years, I just realized I had to get a studio. I, I have 30 years of archives. I need flat files. I, I'm just so maxed out with space. So um, I started looking north, which was supposed to be where it's cheaper. But I found that the developers were already there. So it was, it's been very, very hard um, for me to find something that was feasible, that is use, that that was priced for a user as opposed for a development, and I find that almost everything out there is priced for development, and it made it really hard for someone like me who just wants a building to use. That was my biggest problem trying to find a space. What do you think about the future of etching, given digital printing is all the rage? Are you finding that? The collaboration with silicon and the combination of the printing processes is perhaps the wave of the future? I, I think that it is, and, and I think there will always be purists, and, I, uh, and that's fine. People are looking for new ways of making art, and um, printmaking is part of that movement. I think that that's exciting. I, I just don't want to see 
people forget why you make an etching and when to use an etching. And what are the answers to those questions? For the specific kinds of, of marks that you get from an etching plate and not just to reproduce. For example, what sorts of marks do you um, get? The kind of line that you get, you just can't get really any other way. And um, for someone to take a drawing, a lot, you know, a lot of people are using these non-toxic techniques and that involves a photo process usually, not always, but usually. And I don't think it's the same, although I have been fooled by some of them, but it, it's, it is um, just something that I hope doesn't take over because the, a true etching mark is really unique and beautiful, and I hope people don't forget what that mark looks like. Is printing generally a local sort of thing? So, you know, you talked about working for Philadelphia people, but um, not necessarily working for people beyond the city. Is that the way it is across the country, across the world? No. I, yeah, as a matter of fact, I didn't have any Philadelphia artists that I worked with until the late 90s. Um, almost everyone was from New York. Somehow, that transition was made and it became all Philadelphia artists. And that's great, that means there's a lot of artists here and it's, it's great. But um, I just would work with anybody who wanted to make an exciting print. We've been speaking with Cindy Ettinger at her studio on Vine Street. Thank you so much for talking with us, Cindy. Thank you. Art Blog Radio is brought to you by theartblog.org. Thanks to our sponsors, including the Knight Foundation. Also, we want to thank Peter Crimmins, who makes us sound good. He's our editor. And thanks to Eric Biondo for his music. You can download these podcasts at theartblog.org slash radio.